but this is a cooperative game where players are going to be working together to complete objectives of a scenario in a post-apocalyptic zombie infested world. And if you are familiar with the video game like I am, then you know that this is based on that IP. And you also know that a big aspect of that game is the parkour. And this is something that the board game aims to do really well. And they do have a few ways to make sure that they are able to support that. One way that's done is through gaining momentum with your actions and performing perfect moves. But then this is also supported by the 3D map, which just looks so amazing out on the board. And another big aspect of the video game, if you are familiar with it, and probably a part of that game that haunts many of your dreams, is the night phase of that game because everything transforms at night and the zombies get a lot more powerful and a lot more aggressive and it gets a lot creepier. And that is also something that is supported in this game, not only through the mechanisms, but also through the way that the game is presented through its components because this is a game that has something unique that I haven't seen on any other game. And that's that you can actually play this with a UV light and the entire board and components will light up in order to allow you to play it in that way. But this is a scenario based game, which means that there's going to be a whole booklet of different scenarios that players will be able to play through with each of those giving you different narrative setup and goals and objectives, as well as your win and loss conditions. And there will also be a campaign mode as well that allows players to play through a string of scenarios and to enjoy an overarching plot. But of course, there'll be a whole variety of different characters that players can play as each with their own miniatures and standee versions, as well as their own special abilities, which will make playing the game a little bit different depending on the character that you choose. Players will set up the board according to the scenario booklet, but then each player is going to be starting with some starting gear that can be upgraded or replaced throughout the game. The game plays over a series of rounds where each round you're going to have the player phase where the players will be able to perform their actions, and then you're going to have the zombie phase where the zombies are going to get activated and perform their actions. But each round does represent a passage of time throughout the day, and as those rounds move forward you're going to be keeping track of that on this round tracker, but once you pass the seventh space on this track that's going to be moving you into the night phase where things get a little bit more difficult. At the start of each round, players are going to be rolling any dice that they have in their supply, and then you're going to be spending those dice in order to perform actions. And the cool thing about this is that the icons on the die don't indicate the action that you're able to take. Instead, each die acts as an action point, and certain actions will require more action points, in other words, more dice, in order to perform those actions. But the icons on the die that you use to perform the action can augment that action or prepare you for later events that might happen in the round. But the different actions will allow you to do all sorts of different things like move around on the board, climb or jump across different structures, attack the enemies, or even even interact with different points of interest that you might discover out on the map. As you spend your dice to perform your actions, you're going to be placing them into this track in the center of your board to indicate that they've been used, and then you'll also gain benefits for getting to a certain point on the track, but not all these dice will come back to you in your following turn because some of these dice might be exhausted moving down into the lower parts of your board, keeping them there until they become unexhausted and go back into your supply. One other important thing to note about the actions is that depending on the actions that you choose and also your relative positioning to the enemies when you are performing those actions, you can actually generate a certain amount of risk. And anytime that you gain risk in this game, you're going to be rolling an equal amount of risk dice, which can have all sorts of negative effects like deal additional damage to you, spawn enemies out on the map, cause you to temporarily lose your dice or generate something called exposure. But before I jump into explaining what exactly that does, I just also want to mention that if you're able to spend any dice that have this symbol on it, that is the evade symbol, and you can actually use that to reduce the amount of risk dice that you need to roll. And getting back to what the exposure does, well, it's nothing good for you, but it's great for the zombies because after all the players have performed their actions, we're going to be moving into the zombie phase also known as the exposure phase. And at this point in the game, the zombies are going to be able to move and attack. But the thing that determines that is that each player is going to be drawing a number of exposure cards equal to the amount of exposure that they generated. These cards are going to dictate how many enemies spawn, how many movements they get, and if there's any other special effects. And what's neat about these cards is that there is a white side and a black side with each side representing the different effects that will happen if you are in a day round or if you are in a night round. And I did mention that things do get a lot tougher at night and that is just one way that that happens, but there's also going to be this effect card that's in play and depending on if it's day or night, you're going to have a different effect from that. 
but then also in a day phase players get to decide the order that they want to play their characters but at night you're actually going to be drawing cards from a deck to determine which player gets to go in which order but also in that deck there are some enemy activation cards which can actually allow the enemies to activate even during the player's turn. Not only that, but the zombies are just going to be a lot more alert during the night phase and there's going to be more ways for you to get exposure and the zombies are generally just going to be tougher to defeat. And there's a whole bunch of different zombies offered in this game, each with their own stats and abilities. And anytime that players get into combat with one of these zombies, you're going to be comparing the attack against the defense, depending on who's attacking who. And then you'll also be able to roll dice to deal additional damage. Of course, players do also have some gear cards and maybe some special abilities that might come in handy. So you'll want to make sure that you're making use of those whenever it is appropriate. But the game continues like this until players complete that scenario objective or get eaten alive by the hordes and hordes of zombies. And if you are interested in either of those outcomes, definitely go ahead and check out this campaign. I'll have it linked in the description below.